Good evening. Hello, everyone. This is Tim Wilmot speaking. Thanks for joining me today, uh, this evening, for this live demonstration of a watercolour painting from start to finish. Uh, for those of you listening live, your microphone is on mute. I've got about uh, 40 or so people on the call, so it'd be pretty noisy if um, if everyone was speaking at the same time. If you've got any questions or comments for me, uh, please type those into the questions section on your meeting control panel, which you might have seen on your screen. And uh, I'll do my best to answer those at the end, um, or if I've got a, a pause in the session. Uh, by the way, if you do ask any questions, I'll only give out your first name um, to protect your identity. And uh, But if you really want to, I can unmute you. Um, your, unmute your microphone so we can actually speak with each other. So you as my attendees today, those listening live, uh, I'd very much welcome any feedback on any aspect of this demo, uh, the picture quality, sound quality, uh, the overall experience. I I'm actually trying, for those of you that might have seen my last two uh, presentations, two, two last demonstrations, I'm actually trying a slightly higher uh, definition resolution setting for the camera. So it'd be good to know how smooth the video looks your end. Of course, there's lots of variables as regards um, um, the, the, the speed and so on and the, your internet up, upload speed and download speed, but uh, please give me any feedback. I'll try and give as much commentary as I go through describing what I'm doing, uh, but please excuse me if there's periods of silence. I'm probably trying to desperately think of what to do next. Also, this session is being recorded. After the presentation, you'll receive an email um, and a link to the recording. You can share that with other people if you wish. And also, I'll, I'll post it up on YouTube as well. OK, my subject tonight is a beach scene. So slightly different from last uh, last time, trying to choose different topics every every demo I do. And it's a Mediterranean beach scene. I think it works well for watercolour in that you've got light and dark, quite a lot of dark, very dark, as you can see. And um, alternating bands of those of those contrasts as well. So I have to think, when I look at this, I have to think, well, uh, what can I change? How can I simplify it? And very often, if if I'm uh, um, putting a bit, bit of effort into a painting, I'll, I'll do a a draft sketch first of all. So this is one I did earlier. Let me just see if I can position that for you. So this is a little draft preliminary sketch I did earlier. Just to help me think about the actual composition and where the light and darks will be. And also introducing figures. You can see in the in the photo I took there's there's no figures that well there's a couple of figures lying on the beach and some people lurking in the uh, in the background there. You can just see a slight glimmer on, on the tops of their heads, but fairly insignificant. So I have to think, well, where can I introduce some figures? And again, introduce some light and dark in the uh, in the composition. So I've had a few little sketches just to try out some placement of figures. And uh, I think this might work. So one large figure may be walking away from us and then maybe two figures um, coming towards us and they're kind of highlighted there against the dark background. So <laughs> I may follow that. As regards my palette, hopefully you can see my palette there on the right hand side. These are the colors I'm using. Hopefully that's lined up okay for you. So um, the normal, the normal common colors, um, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, light red, probably using a fair bit of cad, uh, light red today for the um, for those uh, nice warm colors there of the buildings and maybe some of the beach. Okay, so let's get started then. So paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. It's 200 
sorry, um, 300 grams weight and rough texture. And I'm using a 2B pencil. I've actually marked out the corners of my paper. I found last time I, I couldn't actually see where, the, see where the paper ended and the masking tape started. So that's just really for reference for my purposes, these four little corners there. Okay, so let's um, get in the building outlines then. So we'll have a, I don't know why, but I always start on the left-hand side, normally the top left corner. I'm going to work my way across. So I've got some buildings, the left-hand building coming down. And then slight dip. And then we've got some uh, background sort of pitch roof there. I actually attempted this scene probably about a year ago on a much larger scale. Um, so I have done this, uh, this actual scene before. That's the uh, tallest building there. And then we're sliding off to the right with some cascading roofs. Something like that. And let's get in. Let's just give you a reminder. Oh, you should have seen, by the way, I did send via the chat window a little clickable link, little URL to, to click on. You might have um, noticed that, so you can actually pop it up. Hopefully, it pops up in another window <laughs> so, so you can still see what I'm doing, um, the actual scene I'm painting this morning, I'm painting there today. Um, so I'm now going to concentrate on going some building details, but um, there's, there's quite a, a light patch in the building. I might um, make a feature of that, this sort of triangular patch there where the, the, the sunlight's catching the side of the building. Try and make that a little bit of a, a feature or a focal point there. So that's on this side here. Okay, and it's kind of a retaining wall here at the top of the beach, some greenery, there's some steps. And now for the base of the buildings and the shadow on the beach going down to the water's edge. Um, this is a slight slope. Not a sort of straight line, but a few little bumps in it. Okay, and some windows in here, in there, and some 
side windows there. Just some chimney details. Now the side shadow um, at the top of the beach. I'll just roughly indicate where it's going to be. Something like that. And let's now draw in the where the waves are going to be. Water's edge. Something like that. Right. So going back to my draft sketch. So that main figure, I'm going to have to make sure I concentrate and not put that main figure dead center because that's obviously a bit of a no-no as regards composition. Um, so that will be slightly off center. And then these two figures walking towards us, they'll be um, sort of on the, uh, the right hand third, so to speak. So let's um, let's get in those two two figures first walking towards us. That's figure number one, figure number two. There we are, and their shadows are going to go something like that. And then the larger figure will be somewhere here, so that's the, that's the middle, so just slightly to the left maybe. Um, And that figure shadow be something like that. All right, let's just uh, make sure that shadow is a bit more defined there. There's those steps. It's kind of a balcony up there, maybe a few more figures up there. Um, Right, that's the outline drawing done. So let's start painting. So first of all, we'll start with the sky and decide which brush I'm gonna start using for this. So normally it'll be a, a mop brush. There we are, so sort of a, a medium size mop and I've got a an assortment of Escoda brushes. This is an Escoda Aquario. It's um, a squirrel brush, quite a good one. Lost its point. <laughs> it lost its point about a year or two ago, but it still is uh, is pretty good. So the sky area is very small in comparison to the rest of the painting, so. It's not going to be too detailed. It'll just be uh, a fairly simple sky. And I'll go round the tops of the roof, roofs. There we are. And 
we'll add in a bit of cerulean. That should be a bit of cobalt as well. moisture down there all right So now I will go on to the background buildings, starting with the roofs and working my way down. And for this, we need a, a warmer color. I should have just noticed a bit of too much moisture there. Don't want the, when I go in with the roof, the roofs. I don't want the uh, red to bleed too much into the sky. Sometimes a bit of bleeding is good for that looser effect. All right, just change over now to different mop brush. This one's actually a bit softer and a bit more of a, a better point. And uh, the hairs are slightly longer than that, that first mop brush there. So let's um, make up the roof color. So continue on down the down the buildings. Thank you. 
as I come down, I've got to make sure I don't go over the, the two figures there on the right hand side. Just adding a bit of yellow ochre. Oops, just get rid of that spot there. Can actually go over their faces, but just there clothing don't want to go over right beach so I was thinking about this, I could, as I do my wash, I could go from left to right, horizontal lines, but because they were, were sort of sideways on to the beach, I thought, well, I'll actually try um, and starting the background come, come forward. So I'll try that technique uh, on this one. So because the paper's rough, it's leaving a few little sparkles there, which I may leave in. So got down to the water's edge now. So I'm just using a bit of cobalt turquoise. As the
beach is dry. I'm just going to add in a few little sparkles there. Just use a slightly smaller brush. So that's really the first wash done. So just to speed up the process, I'm just going to use my hair dryer now. So I'm just going to put myself on mute. Excuse me a second. Okay, sound back on. Now, next step is to go in with the darks. So, going back to the actual photograph, um, we'll start on the left-hand side here. We're going to add in the uh, the dark shadows of the buildings. So that should really make the uh, the lights pop out there. So for this, I'm going to use a slightly smaller mop brush. Um, this is a size 8 for the Jackson's uh, mop brush. Actually, what I'll do first might just add in a bit of roof details. So we're going to add in basically a darker tone now. Do a bit of mixing of the reds. And a bit of ultramarine blue.
just leave a few sparkles. There's actually a bit of green in there as well. So now the steps. Now to get the very dark shadows I'm using a bit of neutral tint and a blue in this case a bit of cobalt Chimneys. So as I'm coming down to the base of those shadows I'm going to go a lot dark and a lot cooler as well just paint around this figure here
Right, now we'll do figures. So I'm still using the little mop brush here. And then some uh, shadows. Now this figure here the main figure. Let's make this person a little bit darker. And then the shadow. We'll maybe add a few little highlights in there when we're when we're done. Right. So now we will do, let's go for the left hand side there, um, left hand side of the building and that's in quite dark shadow but again we'll um, have warm at the top and as we come down we'll go a little bit cooler and then some very cool uh, shadows onto the uh, onto the beach there so I'm back to this medium-sized mop brush again and we'll start off as I say fairly warm at the top And as we come down, we'll go a bit 
cooler and darker. So that's like a, a wall there. And now for the dark shadows on the beach. Try and get my perspective right. Let's go in again with a bit more of that green, uh, mixing viridian here with yellow ochre. Fairly, it's fairly thick. It doesn't run too much. Okay, now, remaining things to be done. More details on the buildings. Uh, the uh, kind of bit more definition to the roofs may be window details, figures, and um, some sort of debris. We'll try and roughen up the, uh, the beach shed a little bit. It looks a bit too clean and pristine at the moment. So let's just see how dry that, oh, actually it is quite dry now, so it should be okay to go with. So now I'm going to use a 
medium sized synthetic brush and let's pick up any of this stuff here So, it's quite a dark mix, this and fairly thick as well. Actually working my way over to the right. and some window details so that's fairly thick cerulean blue there and Some burnt umber here, a neutral tint, Right. Well, I've got this synthetic brush. I'll just see if I can just 
letter. A little bit of paint there. Too much, don't overdo it. Let's see if we can also just pick up on some of these areas that were left white or left a bit lighter. On a little window on the side here. Faces now of the two people walking towards us. Again, I may as well use this brush here when I've got it. Using a bit of mainly light red here. Few arms there. Let's give this guy a hand. Mm. Something that beach needs something. Let's go in Got a bit of cerulean blue here, quite quite thick as well on the brush. Just dragging it where I think it needs it. Right, I think we're nearly there. Let's just, does that need anything up here?
Right, let's now finish off with some highlights. I don't know where that figure actually needs any highlights. Might just leave it as it is. Um, so to add in the highlights, some might say it's cheating a little bit, but I'm using um, white gouache here right out of the tube with a very tiny synthetic brush. Make sure it's not too wet. Here we are. Um, good. With these, some of these marks here, you can sometimes just pick up on them and actually make little figures out of them. So that could be someone's head there, for example. We could just make some shoulders there and Maybe there's someone else up here. Oh yeah, don't overdo it. And then uh, a few highlights on the bushes. As I say, I think I'll leave that. Oh, let's go for it. <laughs> Change my mind. Might regret it. Right, there we are. So hopefully that's come out okay your end. What, what I'll do now is um, I'll just dry it a bit more with the hairdryer. So I'm going to go on mute again. Then I'll take off the masking tape that I've had around the picture and we'll see what the result is. So hang on a second. taken the hair dry away. Let's get the masking tape off here. So we finished. Um, right now, for any 
questions you've got there, please. So please locate that question panel. Um, feel free to make any comments, ask any questions, give me feedback on what you thought, please, um, as regards the the demo and the the actual sound quality, picture quality, and so on. I'd be very much welcome feedback there. Um, so let me just um, sort out my question panel here. Um, so first question from Nathan. Can you go through the colors again? Oops, okay, there we go. Uh, so neutral tint, burnt umber. Uh, that makes quite a nice sky, a dark clouds that burnt umber with uh, ultramarine blue. Um, they lined up okay. So burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt turquoise, cerulean blue, good for skies, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, use a lot of that. Uh, Alice and crimson, cadmium red, that's the sort of brightest red you can get, light red, and cad orange, and there's a a yellow down the bottom there, which I often use for um, making greens uh, with with uh, with one of the blues. There you go, Nathan. Um, next next question from Claire: Do you ever do portraits? Uh, no, I just do just do landscapes. Claire uh, actually takes a lot longer to do a portrait than a landscape, I reckon. So I do admire portrait uh, painters for their patience. Next question from Jason. Um, good evening. Do you usually stretch your paper? No. Um, I always use masking tape, Jason. So just any sort of masking tape from a DIY store. That's, that's the widest one um, that uh, you can normally get. You can obviously get, get narrow ones, but I find they're a bit fiddly. And it gives a nice sort of border when you've finished around the, uh, around the paper there. Um, next question from Susan. Um, what size paper are you working on? Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, 15 inches by 11 inches. Not sure what that is in metric, but this is uh, quarter imperial. Next question from Camil Camilla. Um, your movements are regretfully jerking the video, but otherwise quality is very good. I'm interested at what angle your board is. Uh, it's a, just a slight angle. Um, so about that sort of angle, maybe less than 10 degrees, which isn't the normal angle I do, Camilla. I'd, I'd actually go for a, a steeper angle, um, but because I've got my camera right above me, which I keep bumping into, um, I've got to keep it fairly flat for the demo. Um, next question from Roger, are you using artist watercolors? Uh, yes, Roger, it's um, Winsor Newton um, artist quality watercolors. Um, Frank, um, Tim, there's a particular method you use for determining your figure's clothing or col colouring, especially given the surrounding colours and values of the background. Thanks. Um, yes, yeah, not sure what you're saying there, Frank, but um, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, these two figures, I, I want to try and make sure that this was a kind of a focal point there. So this one's, this one's darker than the background. These are lighter than the background, and uh, of course, when the, the figures are further back, you can't really discern any colours anyway. Uh, next question from Laura. Uh, what would you do for figure highlights if you didn't have the white gouache available? I'd have to be very, very careful, as I did with this figure, um, just painting around it. So I'd have to leave the paper um, unpainted, leave some of the paper showing through. So be very careful on that first wash to paint around it, and uh, yeah, just be just be very careful, um, very sort of diligent as you as you paint around the figures. Uh, next question from 
Joseph, do you ever run into problems with your masking tape tearing the paper when you pull off? Yes, I do, Joseph. Um, I find if you go for the cheapest, that'll come away a lot easier than the more expensive. There, there are, I know there are some masking tape brands that are sort of guaranteed for 24 hours and they've got um, super glue <laughs> attached to them. And I know what you mean when you pull it off and uh, it rips half the paper away with it. So it's very, uh, very frustrating. So I, I just get the cheapest Joe's if you can. Um, and then sometimes the, the problem then is if, you, if you're spending a long time with the painting or you're using the hairdryer too close, the, the masking tape actually comes away just before you want it to. So uh, it can go the other way. Uh, next question from Laura. Um, what did you say to the naysayers about using neutral tint? Is it Winsor Newton? Um, yes, it's Winsor Newton neutral tint. And um, you could you could labor with making a really dark color with ultramarine blue. I sometimes do it with ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a, a tiny bit of alizarin and crimson. But it's a lot quicker to bring up the neutral tint and then mix it with one of those, um, well, one of those other darker colors, the, the cobalt or the uh, ultramarine blue or the alizarin and crimson. Um, to get in to get quickly these these darker these darker shadows there right next question from Joseph is the surface you're painting on at an angle yes Joseph it's at about 10% uh, which is a little bit shallower than I'm normally used to um, so I do go at a steeper angle but uh, today because of the camera position I had to um, had to adjust that. Uh, question from Peter. Um, thanks again for sharing. You mentioned you did this scene before, but how much bigger? It was twice the size, um, literally twice the size, Peter, but same, again, the same uh, orientation, landscape. Um, any made, are there any major differences, changes, things that you changed because of the first one? Um, yeah, the figures. Uh, if you've seen the original, um, which actually is up on my blog now, um, if you go to timwilmot.com, you'll see the first one I did. And probably a little bit more detail. The colors, the washes were allowed to bleed a bit more because of the angle. Um, and the figures were all different as well. Um, second question from Peter, I like the darks in your paintings. You mentioned neutral, neutral dark, neutral tint, or something like that. Um, is that similar to Payne's Gray? Yes, you can. It's almost impossible, I, in my opinion, to distinguish Payne's Gray from from neutral tint. Maybe Payne's Gray's got a little bit more blue in it, um, and neutral tint is grayer. Um, but that, but apart from that, it'd be difficult to uh, to tell the two apart. Uh, next question from Laura. I've noticed that many painters in the UK utilise white sparkly bits in their work, um, but not so much over here in the US. Is that something you learn from an instructor, or is it just that many British watercolorists do that do that of national habit? Um, I think Laura. I know some. I know some. UK watercolor, landscape watercolor painters that, particularly with um, with seascapes, uh, they use a lot of masking fluid. Um, I personally don't use that. Um, I prefer to use rough paper and uh, you know drag. If you if you drag the side of your brush along the paper on rough paper, then um, you do get those those sparkly bits naturally without having to use masking fluid. Um, yeah, maybe it's a British trait. I'm not not too sure. I know I know there's there's a, a very strong watercolor um, group family in the U.S. and um, yeah, I have noticed that many landscape U UK artists um, those sparkly bits there. Next question from Jason: Have you modeled your own technique on other watercolors? Yeah, many uh, many 
looser style watercolorists, um, David Taylor, um, Alvaro Castagne, um, Joseph Zubukvich, um, there's, there's a few, um, John Pike, the U.S. artist. Uh, yeah, all the all the loose styles, Jason. I, I just uh, look at them all and just pinch what works for me, basically. Uh, next question from Peter. So uh, it's on your site, the first version. Could you give us a date? Um, Peter, if you go to the website and you do a search for Saint Tropez, um, S-T space T-R-O-P, EZ, EZ, then uh, you'll find it there. Um, I'll, I'll pop this one up sometime on, on the website as well. Okay, I don't think there's any more questions. So I'd just like to thank everyone for um, your, your time this evening and your feedback. I very much appreciate that. Uh, there's my contact details. Tim Wilmot email timothy wilmot at gmail.com and the blog um i post paintings fairly regularly up on the uh the blog there um normally about one every two or three days or so different landscapes i'm doing uh, but thanks very much everyone do do appreciate it um and hope to see you again or speak to you again sometime um i i, I will be probably doing another one in a month or two's time. So just look out for the blog. I might mention on YouTube as well. Um, but hope to see you around sometime and, and happy painting, everyone. Cheers for now. Bye bye.